Hello gentlemen, welcome to our movie on the quantum mechanical model of the atom. Now last class we related the quantum mechanical model to a movie theater model. A summary of that discussion is here. In the first energy level, our principal energy level, we had one sublevel, which was the S sublevel, and the S sublevel has one orbital. In the second energy level, we have two sublevels, S and P. The S sublevel has one orbital, the P sublevel has three sublevels, PX, PY, and PZ. In energy level 3, we have three sublevels, S, P, and D. S has one orbital, P has three orbitals, D has five orbitals. In energy levels 4 through 7, we have S, P, D, and F, four sublevels. Again, S has one, P has three, D has five, and F has seven orbitals. Two electrons apiece for each orbital. So you can count how many electrons can fit in a in energy level 1, 2, 3, and 4 through 7. Now we said that these orbitals have shapes. S is shaped like a sphere, P like a infinity sign, D like a clover, and F is very complex. Now these shapes are based on experimental data. These shapes are based on the mathematical descriptions of locating an electron at any given time. We have to do this because we cannot observe with our eyes or observe with, you know, many tools the direct behavior of electrons. So, we have to construct a mathematical model that will, or that is, ba that is based on our experiments, that best fits our data. Now, Niels Bohr is the godfather of quantum mechanics. He originally thought that electrons orbited the nucleus. However, we know now that he was not correct entirely. Electrons do not orbit the nucleus, and, they were and this was disproven by a guy named Werner Heisenberg and his uncertainty principle, which states that it is impossible to precisely determine the position and momentum of an electron at the same time. Because the very act of looking at an electron gives energy to that electron and gives it more speed. So you never know the position and the momentum, in, which is, you know, mass times the velocity, at the same exact time because the very act of looking at it makes it move faster or makes it move. This is why we can no longer say that electrons are in orbit because orbits are predictable. We have to say that they're in orbitals because we can only confine them to a certain mathematical, mathematically described space, which are these shapes here. If you watch Breaking Bad, this is why the main character described himself as Heisenberg, because you never knew his position and his momentum at the same time. He was very elusive. Now, we use what we talked about in class, orbital diagrams, to depict the arrangement or the probable arrangement of electrons in an atom. <clears throat> there are three rules that will govern how we do this. The first rule is called off-ball principle. It says that electrons fill orbitals from the lower energy first. So starting at 1s, working its way down. Now working its way down may not be as clear-cut as it sounds. We use the off-ball diagram to show how electrons fill different orbitals. So first, the 1s orbital is filled. I'm going to show the direction in order in which electrons are filled by these arrows. So 1s is filled first, then 2s, then 2p, then 3s. Now here's where it changes a little bit. Then 3p and 4s. You would think maybe 3s would fill, then 3p, then 3d, but actually that doesn't happen. So we have 3p, then 4s, then 3d, 4p, 5s, and so forth. Now, that's the off-ball principle. The second rule is our Pauli exclusion principle. This is simple. It says that an orbital can have a maximum of two electrons in it, and those electrons have opposite spins. My third rule is Hund's rule. This says that when electrons occupy orbitals of equal energy, meaning they're in the same sublevel, 
one electron enters each orbital with parallel spin before it pairs oppositely. So let's try to construct, well, let's construct an orbital diagram for sulfur. First things first, sulfur has 16 electrons. Find it. It's here, 16 electrons, and it's located in the P sublevel. Our periods represent our principal energy levels. So I am in period three, excuse me one sec, I'm in period three, and across period three, I go all the way to sulfur, and I'm there. So sulfur's highest electrons are going to be in 3P. So its valence electrons are in 3P. So that would be where I stop. Now, to get there, I start at 1s. To start at 1s, I go from hydrogen and helium. I read like a book from left to right. Hydrogen to helium, and then lithium to beryllium, and then across boron through neon, and then across here, well, down to the bottom, like left to right. I go to 3s, go through both of my 3s atoms here, and then across to aluminum, all the way to sulfur. So let's do 1s. So I represent my electrons with arrows. One arrow going up, one arrow going down. Follows the Pauli exclusion principle there. One of these is for hydrogen, the other one is for helium. So I went through hydrogen and then helium. And now I'm at the end of that energy level, so I go to energy level 2. And now I'm at 2s. Lithium and beryllium. Remember, this one line means I have one orbital. The S sublevel has one orbital, one seat in our movie theater. So one electron for lithium, another electron for beryllium. I have now gone through lithium and beryllium here. Sorry, lithium and beryllium. Now I'm going across the periodic table to boron. And I go into 2P. The Hund's rule says when I have electrons that are occupying orbitals that have equal energy, meaning I have they're in the same sublevel, I put them in with parallel spin first, and then I pair oppositely. If I'm going through the entire P block, which in this case I am, I'm going from boron all the way to neon. And if you count that six different elements, accounting for six different electrons here. And then I go to energy level 3s because I'm at the end of the line in 2. 3s, I go through so sodium and magnesium. That's 3s1, 3s2. And then I go to 3p where I'm going to be ending. Starting at aluminum. Go to aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, and then I end at sulfur. So that's four electrons in, but I have to follow Hund's rule, which says since I have four electrons to place, I put three with parallel spin before I go and pair oppositely. That is the orbital diagram of sulfur. Let's take notes on that one. Let's do another one. Let's say I did it for bromine. I've already done this one out. You can follow along on your periodic tables and see how this one is done. So bromine has 35 electrons. So all of my arrows at the end of the day should add up to 35. I start at 1s. 1s holds two electrons total, one for hydrogen, one for helium. Then I go to 2s. 2s has one orbital as well, holds two electrons for <clears throat> lithium and beryllium. And then 2p. The p sub level has three orbitals, three seats, two electrons apiece. So I go from boron through neon. And then I go to 3s, fill those two up. After the s block, I go to the p block. This is where I stop for sulfur. So as you can see, boron's overall le electron arrangement even has other elements of electron arrangement in it. So if I stopped here, I'd be at sulfur. But I can't. I have to keep on going. After 3p, so after I go through 3p, I go to 4s. 
for S1, for S2, that's potassium and calcium. And now we have something different. If we look back at that off-bar diagram, you'll see after 4S, we go up to 4D, and 4D feels first before 3D. Sorry, 4S feels first before 3D. So after 3P, we have 4S, and then we go into the D block. When we go into the D block, we drop one energy level to 3. So from 4 to 3, and it's 3D, and we go, if we're going all the way through, it's 3D, 10, because we're passing 10 elements. When we come out of it, it's 4P again. So we go back up to 4, so 4P. So we have 3D, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and then we came out of the D block, into the P block again, and we're going over to boron, sorry, to, bor to bromine, which is right here. So we're going over 5, so we have 1, 2, 3 with parallel spin, and then we oppose oppositely. One, two, total of five. This is bromine's orbital diagram. Now, it can be tedious to draw these orbital diagrams over and over again, so we've created a written expression for orbital diagrams called electron configuration. This is just taking the orbital diagram or taking the knowledge of that and putting it in a much smaller space. So instead of putting these arrows, we use superscripts. So instead of 1s with two arrows, we use 1s superscript 2. This is for sulfur. So 1s2, 2s2, and then in my second energy level, P sub level, I have six total electrons, like we see here. 3s2, and then 3p4. So if I did it for bromine, it would look like this. At first energy level, I have an S sub level. I have two electrons there. It's one S2. Then I have two S2, second energy level, S sub level, two electrons. Then two P6. Then three S2, three P6, four S2, and then three D10, and then four P5. If you count up all your superscripts, then you will have 35, counting up to your 35 electrons. So gentlemen, take notes on this. We'll practice next class. Adios.